Artists have used aids to help make art for thousands of years, the grid system being the earliest on record. I'd like to discuss some of the tools the masters may have used, and I'll give you some trivia along the way. Art historians and scientists don't agree with each other about some of the following concepts. Two of these paintings have the same look and feel, even though they are separated by 500 years. This is a work created sometime before 1400 and is an example of portraits at that time. Can you say you would recognize the woman in this painting? Have you ever noticed how infants at this time all looked like little old men? Take a look at the perspective in this painting. It's typical of work done before 1400. This painting was done just a couple decades after 1400. The difference is striking. What happened? Did everyone suddenly learn how to draw? The first milestone on our adventure is Budalecce, who did this drawing at the Florence Baptistry in 1420. To prove the perspective was accurate, he put a small hole in the drawing. Then holding a hand mirror in front of the drawing, you could see the painting. By moving the mirror to compare it to the actual building, you could see they were the same. There is a theory that Budalecce made his drawing by using a concave mirror to project an image of the baptistry onto his drawing surface. You can try this by holding a magnifying mirror in a semi-dark room and projecting an image onto the wall from the light coming through the window. Jan van Eyck, one of the earliest artists to make use of oil paint, was noted for his stunning detail and photographic quality. This level of painting was not seen before 1420. Notice the two men in the background. One is wearing a black cloak and red turban, perhaps Van Eyck's way of leaving his signature. One of Van Eyck's most recognizable paintings is the Arnafini Wedding, created in 1434. One theory says that this is a memorial painting. The woman shown here is said to have died in 1433. Notice the exquisite detail in this convex mirror. In the original painting, the whole mirror is only about the size of your hand. This complicated chandelier is in perfect 3D perspective, something almost impossible to create by the naked eye. Did Van Eyck use a tool to create such a perfect perspective? Leonardo da Vinci was the creator of this young lady's portrait. FYI, there are two versions of the Mona Lisa recognized as originals. In his notebooks, he illustrates a technique for creating a drawing on a glass surface. He was thinking about how to improve the process. Albrecht Dürer was a master painter and printmaker of the Northern Renaissance. He was one of the first internationally known artists and as such was the first to use a trademark in an effort to protect his work from plagiarism. If you ever went to Sunday school as a child, you may recognize his 500-year-old drawing of praying hands. Dürer published a book on art and in it he illustrates how to create drawings using a frame with black thread grid and a paper with the same grid system. About the same time in the South, Michelangelo was doing some interior decorating for the Pope. Did you ever wonder how he was able to make such an accurate drawing 50 feet in the air? He used a cartoon system by making the drawing on the ground and then transferring it to the ceiling before starting his fresco. Well, let's get back to mirrors. What happens when you project something in a mirror? Everything is backwards. Franz Hals was a Dutch Golden Age painter. You may not be familiar with his paintings, but he has an entire museum dedicated to his work in the Netherlands. This is one of his paintings from about 1700. It depicts a trio enjoying a glass of wine or two. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? 
There are three left-handed people in the painting and a left-handed monkey. When I reverse the image, does it look more natural? During this period, there were a lot of left-handed drinkers. And I do mean a lot of left-handed drinkers. Now let's discuss Johannes Vermeer. Vermeer was a little-known painter until the mid-1800s. You may remember him for this painting. Here's an interesting earlier painting entitled Diana and Her Companions. An interesting fun fact about this painting is that the sky was added sometime after Vermeer's death. Prussian blue was not available during his lifetime. There has been some speculation about his painting, The Piano Lesson. During this era, optical lenses were coming into vogue and the camera obscura was perfected. The question has always been, how do you create a painting in such a dark environment? Tim Jameson may have found a solution. He first constructed a full-size replica of the scene in the painting. Then he went to work figuring out the optics. This setup may look complicated, but it consists of one lens and two mirrors. With this setup, he is able to paint in a well-lit room. Tim is not a skilled painter, but he was able to create a reasonable replica of the original. A scientist working on these questions is Charles Falco at the University of Arizona. He is a professor of optical science and physics. Around 1850, the camera Lucida was invented. It uses a prism to view the subject and the drawing surface at the same time. The problem with this device is the drawing can only be as large as your arm can reach. Here are some early examples of camera lucida drawings. This is a fact that surprised me. Vincent van Gogh used an aid for some of his drawings. We know this because he documented the device in some of his letters to his brother and demonstrated how he used it in others. Photography and photographic projection was used by many artists during the 20th century, not least of which was Andy Warhol. Now it's the 21st century, and there's an app for that. Who knows what innovations are coming? It is not my intention to say that these great artists somehow cheated or were not creators of original work. Artists are early innovators, and as such, will use the best and newest tools available, particularly if these tools make their job easier and more productive.